Hello everyone. Today in this module we are going to talk about abiotic components of ecosystem. Ecosystem consists of two major components that is the abiotic components and the biotic components. Abiotic components are the non-living part of the environment whereas the biotic components are the living organisms. Both these components are related to each other and help in the functioning of an ecosystem. In this module, we will be seeing what are the abiotic factors and how they are influenced an ecosystem. The learning objectives of this module are introduction to abiotic stress, significance of abiotic factors, topography, biotic and abiotic influence on ecosystem, influence of abiotic factors. All ecosystems consist of two major components that is the biotic and abiotic. The biotic component represents all the living organisms and the abiotic component includes the non-living that is the physical en environment. Both of these components interact closely to exhibit a definite structural organization. In any ecosystem, both of these components are interdependent on each other for various kinds of changes. The two components of the ecosystem are abiotic components and the biotic components. Among the abiotic components are sunlight, temperature, precipitation, water, soil that is the edaphic factor and elements and molecules. Whereas in the biotic components we will study about the primary producers herbivores, carnivores, omnivores and detritivores. Let us talk about the abiotic components. The biotic factors are the governing forces of environment having an impact on the life cycle of organism. Initially, organisms try to adapt to the surrounding environment. They later look for modifying environment so as to enable abiotic components more suitable for their own living. The abiotic factors of the environment impact the well-being and distribution of organisms and the functions of ecosystem. For example, temperature and moisture acting together determine in large measure the climate of a region and the distribution of plants and animal life. Light is essential to plants. Without it, ecosystems could not function. Light also influences circadian rhythms of plants and animals. Soil, functioning as a daffic factor, regulates plant growth through nutrient supply, soil microbial activity wa and water holding capacities. Talking about the significance of abiotic factors. Abiotic factor light. It is the primary source of energy for biological processes. It is the energy that is used by green plants for photosynthesis. Factors such as quality of light, intensity of light and the length of light period that is day length play an important part in regulating these processes. Light energy specifically UV radiation act as a catalyst for genetic mutation. It also drive hydrological cycle. Light regulates photoperiodism and circadian rhythms. Light intensity. The intensity of light that reaches the earth varies according to the latitude and the season of the year. The southern hemisphere receives less than 12 hours of sunlight during the period between the 21st of March and the 23rd of September, but receives more than 12 hours of sunlight during the following 6 months. Next is the day length. Relative lengths of day length and darkness that affect the physiology and behavior of an organism. Certain plants flower only during certain times of the year. One of the reasons for this is that these plants are able to measure the length of the night that is the dark periods. Relative lengths of daylight and darkness that affect the physiology and behavior of an organism. Quality of light. Plants absorb blue and red light during photosynthesis. In terrestrial ecosystems, 
the quality of light does not change much. In aquatic systems, the quality of light is a limiting factor. Both blue and red light are absorbed and as a result do not penetrate deeply into the water. To compensate by water, some algae have additional pigments which are able to absorb other color wavelengths of light. Temperature Temperature is an indication of the amount of heat energy in a system. The higher the heat content, the higher the temperature. On a worldwide basis, temperature is one of the dominating factors affecting plant and animal distribution. The Arctic, the temperate zones and the tropics are largely delimited by temperature differences. The environmental temperatures experienced by most organisms result directly or indirectly from solar radiations reaching any point on earth at any time and varying with time of year, slope, cloud cover, time of day and other factors. Temperature is one of the most critical factors of the environment and exerts a profound influence on all physiological activities by controlling the rate of chemical reaction. Every physiological function has temperature limits above and below which it ceases and an optimum range of temperature at which reactions proceed at maximum rates. As the temperature deviates from this optimum, the rate of reaction decreases, stopping completely beyond a critical limit. Range of temperature at which organisms normally exist is referred to as the physiological range. It varies in different organisms depending on local adaptations. The thermal limit for the survival of metabolically active vascular plants ranges from about 60 degree centigrade to minus 60 degree centigrade in different species. Some blue green algae and other prokaryotic organisms are known to exist from slightly below 0 degree centigrade to about 70 degree centigrade. Frost damage can be seen in plants as some of them cannot prevent freezing of their tissues. Temperature regulates seed germination. Chilling or other special treatment is required for seed germination also. This is referred as vernalization. Some fruit trees such as peach requires a cold period each year so that it can blossom in the spring. Deciduous trees lose their leaves in winter and enter into a state of dormancy where the buds are covered for protection against the cold. These adaptive measures assist plants in overcoming the negative impact of wider fluctuations in temperature. Predictive climate change largely because of greenhouse gas can have a sizable impact on ambient temperature. Precipitation Rainfall is the most common form of precipitation. Other forms of precipitation are in the form of sleet or ice pellets, snowfall and hail. The amount and regularity of rainfall vary with location and climate types and affect the dominance of certain types of vegetation as well as crop growth and yield. Most terrestrial plant species are limited by a combination of temperature, precipitation and light. Water as a abiotic factor. Without water, most life forms would be unable to sustain themselves and the earth would be a barren desert-like place. About 97% of the earth's volume of water is found in the oceans and the remaining 3% is fresh water. More than 75% of fresh water is locked up as ice at the poles and in glaciers leaving less than 1% of the world's water available fresh in liquid state. Only about 0.003% of earth's Total volume of water is easily available to us as fresh water in lakes, soil moisture, exploitable groundwater, atmospheric water vapor and streams. There are two sources of fresh water, namely the surface water and groundwater. Aquatic plants exhibit a wide variety of morphological and physiological adaptations that allow them to survive, compete and diversify in their natural habitats. For example, 
the roots and stems develop large cellular air spaces to allow for the efficient transportation of gases used in respiration and photosynthesis. In aquatic environments, anaerobic soil microorganisms use nitrate, manganese ions, ferric ions, sulfate, carbon dioxide and some other organic compounds. The activity of soil microorganisms and the chemistry of the water reduces the oxidation or reduction potentials of the water. Carbon dioxide for example is reduced to methane by methanogenic bacteria. Because of these processes, wetland play a vital role in global nutrient and element cycles. The salt water environments are physiological desert in which the concentration of salts outside the body of the organism can osmotically dehydrate the organism. In deserts, an absolute lack of moisture exists. Human activity has a large effect on both these types of ecosystems. Excessively, fishing and pollution can drastically affect the salinity and oxygen content of these habits. Aquatic Biomes and Sunlight In large bodies of standing water, including the oceans and lakes, the water can be divided into zones based on the amount of sunlight it receives. The photic zone extends to a maximum depth of 200 meters below the surface of water. This is where enough sunlight penetrates for photosynthesis to occur. Algae and other photosynthetic organisms can make food and support food webs. The other zone is the aphotic zone is water deeper than 200 meters. This is where too little sunlight penetrates for photosynthesis to occur. As a result, food must be made by chemosynthesis or else drift down from the water above. These and other aquatic zones in the oceans are identified in this slide. This slide we can see the ocean is divided into many different zones depending on distance from shore and the depth of water. Soil or edaphic factor. Soil factors include soil texture, soil air, soil temperature, soil water, soil solution and pH together with soil organisms and decaying matter. Soil texture. The size of soil particles varies from microscopic particles called clay to larger particles called sand. Loam soil is a mixture of sand and clay particles. Sandy soils are suitable for growing plants because they are well aerated, excess water drains away quickly, they warm up quickly during the day and is easy to cultivate. Sandy soils is unsuitable because they do not retain much water and soon dry out and contain few soil nutrients required for plant growth. Clay soils are suitable for plant growth because they hold large quantities of water and are rich in mineral nutrients. They are unsuitable in that that they are badly aerated, soon becomes waterlogged and is difficult to cultivate. It also cold during winter. Loam soils possess desirable properties of both sand and clay. It has a high water retaining capacity, good aeration, good nutrient content and is easily cultivated. Soil air is found in those spaces between the soil particles that are not filled with soil water. The amount of air in a soil depends on how firmly the soil is compacted. In well aerated soil, at least 20% of its volume is made up of air. Compact soils of high bulk density and poor structure are aerated poorly. Pore space is occupied by air and water, so the amount of air and water are inversely proportional to the amount of oxygen in the soil. On well drained soils, oxygen content is not likely to be limiting to plant growth. Plants are widely in their sensitivity to soil oxygen. Paddy rice versus tobacco. Soil water can be classified in three types, namely hygroscopic, capillary and gravitational water. Hygroscopic water occurs as a thin film of water around 
each soil particle. Capillary water is that water held in the small spaces between the soil particles and gravitational water is the water that drains downwards through the soil. Soil water is essential for soil organisms. Without some water, there is no microbial activity. Sandy soils with large diameter particles, that is the coarse texture, can contain less water than clay soils with small diameter particles, that is the fine texture soil. The formation of primary soil particles into soil aggregates creates an ideal environment for most bacteria. As the amount of available water decreases, the availability to take up water in soil differs from organisms. Fungal hyphae have the ability to extend through soil pores and obtain water, but bacteria do not share the same advantages. Then comes up the soil temperature. Soil temperature is an important ecological factor. It has been found that the temperature of soil below a depth of water about uh, 30 centimeter is almost constant during the day, but seasonal temperature differences do occur. At low temperature, there is little decay by decay causing microorganisms. Then the soil solution. Soil solution is the decaying remaining remains of plants and animals together with animal excretory products and feces forms humus. This increases the fertility of the soil. Soil pH, acidity or alkalinity of soil that is the pH of the soil influences the biological activity in soil and the availability of certain minerals. Thus the pH of soil has a greater influence on the growth and development of plants. Some plants for example azaleas, ferns and many protea species grow best in acid soils that is where the pH is below 7 while leucrine and many other xerophytes grow better in alkaline soils where the pH goes above 7. The organisms and the decaying matter in the soil is known as soil solution and it increases the fertility of the soil. Plants obtain inorganic elements from the soil which aids as natural medium for land plants. Soil is the outer loose layer that covers the surface of earth. Soil quality a major determinant along with climate of plant distribution and growth depends not only on the chemical composition of the soil but also the topography that is the regional surface features of the soil and the presence of living organisms. It consists of these major components. Components of soil. The four major components of soil are shown as the inorganic minerals, organic matter, water and air. Inorganic mineral matter about 40 to 45 percent of the soil volume, organic matter about 5 percent of soil volume, water about 25 percent of the soil volume and air about 25 percent of the soil volume. The amount of each of the four major components of the soil depends on the quantity of vegetation, soil compaction and water present in the soil. A good healthy soil has sufficient air, water, minerals and organic material to promote and sustain plant life. The organic matter of soil called humus is made up of microorganisms dead and alive and dead animals and plants in varying stages of decay. Humus improves soil structure providing plants with water and minerals. The inorganic material of soil is composed of rock slowly broken down into smaller particles that vary in size. The different types of soil water process in soil is shown in the figure. Elements and molecules. In biological systems we refer to important elements as conservative. These elements are often nutrients. By conservative we mean that any organism can change only slightly the amount of its elements in their tissue if they are to remain in good health. 
It is easiest to think that these conservative elements in relation to other important elements in the organ organism, for example, in healthy algae, the elements C, N, P and iron have the following ratio called the Redfield ratio after the oceanographer who discovered it. Carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus and iron is to 106 is to 16 is to 1 is to 0 0.01. Once we know these ratios, we can compare them to the ratios that we measure in a sample of algae to determine if the algae are lacking in one of these limiting nutrients. The major organic substances, example proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, are substances which are present either in the environment or in biomass. Topography. Topography is the landscape shapes which is determined by the aspects of the slope and elevations. Topography gives a variety to the ecosystems. For example, the grassland topography is varied like hills, prairies, cliffs, low-lying areas, etc., which gives variability to life forms. The aspect of the direction of the land facing also varies as the land facing towards the south or the sun are hotter and drier than areas in the north which are away from the sun. Slope on an area is also important as water may run downhill and may soak in water which makes it available for plants. The area in the southern part with slopes will be much more hotter and drier than the northern areas with slopes. Altitudes play an important role in vegetation zones. Slopes are important when considering the temperature of the soil surface on land with the northern slope on level and on land with south facing slopes. In South Africa, the southern eastern slopes face the rain bearing winds and in some areas are covered with forest, while the slopes on the leeward side are in a rain shadow and thorn shrub is often found growing in these slopes. Biotic and abiotic influences on ecosystem. Ideal biotic and abiotic conditions allow a species to flourish. Other conditions may lead to a species decline or even extinction. Both abiotic and biotic factors determine where a species can live. A limiting factor is any factor that places an upper limit on the size of a population. Limiting factors may be biotic such as the availability of food or abiotic such as the access to water. Human influences often act as the limiting factors too. Abiotic factors such as temperature, light and soil can influence a species ability to survive. Every species is able to survive within a range of each of these factors. This range is called the species tolerance range. Near the upper and lower limits of the tolerance range, individuals experience stress. This will reduce their health and their rate of growth and reproduction. Within a species, tolerance range lies an optimal range where conditions are ideal for a species. Populations try to keep themselves at optimal range. In the slide, we can see species can be successful over a range of abiotic conditions. However, they will become stressed and will die out if conditions exceed their tolerance limit. Some species have wide tolerance ranges while others have lower or narrower ranges. Species with broad tolerance ranges will tend to be widely distributed and may easily spread across the ecosystems. For example, buckthorn, a small tree native to Europe, has become widespread over much of the southern and central Ontario due to its broad tolerance range. Conversely, the showy lady's slipper orchid has a narrow tolerance range. It is found only in specific types of wetlands. In this slide, we can see the cacti can withstand long periods of drought. If overwatered, they may die because their roots cannot survive consistently damp conditions. The next figure is that of aquatic plants. 
such as water lilies will perish quickly if the water levels drops and the roots are exposed to air. And in the third figure, while both cacti and water lilies prefer exposure to full sun, bunch berries are adapted to shades. So, this is how the abiotic factors influence the living organisms and especially the plants and the animal life. To summarize this module, we can say that abiotic factors like light, temperature, water, precipitation, elements and minerals are important uh, abiotic factors and it is very important to study them in order to understand the structure and functionality of an ecosystem. Thank you.